Now third and nine. Garvey, the man in motion, fake it to him. Screen to Clark. Clark will turn it. Try and get his way up the field. Sheds a tackler and he's got open room. Shane Clark puts the game on ice. Touchdown, Owls. Yeah, Over Clark just backs him up the left side. Trying to advance it in for Melendez. Going to connect to now Western New England. Oh, another great opportunity. Almost happened there. Oh, costly turnover there. And now trying to move on in, and it's in for the goal. It's Anthony Frati. And it looked like he just poked it on in, got that last effort in there, and now it's a comfortable 3-0 lead for Western New England. Yeah, very costly. Still a six-point game over to Aiken in the corner. Swung out to Mousset. Trying to use her handles, stays with it, drives it, counted, and one. Chelsea Mousset was getting harassed on the D, stays with it, and has a chance for a three-point play. The Gators have done very well here, and that's what they're known for, is just ball control. They're making the accurate passes. As now, here's a chance passed up. Looking for Garcia, here's the shot, and there's the goal. Henry Garcia with a beautiful play off the breakaway. Right off of midfield, he got one little tap ahead of him and advanced it forward. And it's now one to nothing, Pine Manor. As that was a beautiful play for Garcia. Picks up, that's now 17 points here in 2019. Came into today tied for ninth with five goals. He gets number six. Jolin will make the inbound. Gets it into Pichet, facing the double team. She splits it, has an open basket, and she lays it home. 4.1 to go, and we are tied at 86. Kylie Pichet coming up huge. Westfield does get the timeout to advance it. 4.1 to go. But what a huge play there for Bridgewater. Good evening and welcome to the Woodward Center here on the campus of Westfield State University. It's another MassCAC women's basketball game. The Fitchburg State Falcons and the Westfield State Owls. Hello again, everybody. My name is Joe Braverman. Joined alongside me is Alex Antuna. On the camera is Liam McCarron. Westfield State coming in at 4-10 with a conference record of 1-1. One one. Fitchburg State also at 4-10 but a conference record of 0-2. Westfield wins the tip and we are underway. So Alex, this is a big game here for Westfield State. They just snapped a 10 game losing streak with that victory over Worcester State and they're looking to get a run going as Skolnick draws the foul. And as you said earlier, they start this. But for now, we'll say so long for alum from Alumni Field. For cameraman Liam McCarron, I am Joe Braverman. Join us all year long as we will have plenty more men's soccer action here at WestfieldStateOwls.com. Good night from Westfield Mass. Let's see if they change anything on the defense. O'Day with some heavy pressure and a 10 second violation. And Alyssa Kamara is all fired up. That's the 12th turnover forced by Westfield going against Framingham State again. Westfield almost 34 turnovers forced a game. First in the entire nation among D3 schools. Framingham State entered today, averaging the fewest turnovers in the MassCAC at almost 19. Here goes O'Day the other way, poked from behind, gathered by O'Connor. She'll slow it down, heavy pressure. And now a foul gets called, I believe this will go on Halgis as Patalaro was driving to the bucket and ran right into some contact. It will be on Halgis. That's personal foul number two for her. There is Patelaro again. Another freshman for Framingham in the starting lineup. 5A freshman guard from Newburyport. Fern O'Connor. A freshman in the starting lineup. A very... This is a team filled with youth. As Patelaro goes one for two. O'Day and Veloso, the two seniors with an underclassman starting lineup. Matter of fact, the two of them and Julia Sanborn, who's inactive today, 
are the only three seniors on the roster for the Rams. That turnover was the sixth of the game for Westfield. This in inbounded, thrown out there by Carpenter. Now here's Veloso looking to drive, lost the handle, and taken away by Gray. Here goes Mousset, kicks it out. Skolnick fakes it, baseline drive, tried to go off glass. Gray tips it, and it goes out of bounds. One other note about Melissa Gray, she is tops in the nation in terms of steals. She is first in the nation at 65 total steals and five, almost five and a half steals per game as Mousset almost with the pickpocket. Now she fully completes the steal. Too far ahead though for Skolnick. I'll go back to the Rams. Almost eight minutes to go here in the second quarter. The lead is at four. Wild pass and gathered there by Hadel. Velozo looking for the extra pass, but a kickball. Again, was looking for O'Connor. You can see with Framingham State, though, that they're having a little bit of trouble with this full court press. Even after they break it, they're a little bit lost. Over the top for Sullivan now. Belozo baseline drive, trying to go back to O'Connor, and again, she uses the height. Tallest player on the floor at 5'11". It'll take a multiple Westville players to stop her, but no one can stop that shot from Mendel. And now Mendel draws the foul. Still a five point game here. Westfield again shooting exceptionally well from beyond the arc, 50%, seven of 14. 14 of the 23 shots have gone beyond the arc. There's O'Connor, nice little fast break opportunity there. Carpenter to O'Connor. Moriarty gathers it in the corner, tries to cross over, goes off her foot. Another Westfield turnover will go back to Framingham State. Fresh five are in for Westfield. Inbound goes to Carpenter. And these two teams in the preseason poll predicted first and second. Nice baseline jumper there by Sullivan, all set up by, I believe it was O'Day on the drive. Musek running the action, crossover, Falcone. Ah, oh, and she hesitated on the pass there. She's telling herself, hey, settle down, settle down. That's another turnover there, number nine against Westfield. Again inbounded to O'Day. So far, O'Day and Veloza have been quiet, only three points as O'Connor once again O'Connor's got 18 of the 29 points that Framingham State has scored so far. Aiken on the corner, loses the handle. Sullivan tries to gather and she comes up with it. Ahead to Carpenter. Three on three for the moment. Carpenter looking for options to Sullivan. Framingham's got some size. O'Day is left alone and makes some pay. Four point lead now for Framingham State. West, or, uh, Framingham, I should say, playing with a lot of size and an and one for Chelsea Mousset. Little shaken up, but she looks.